Hello and welcome to another edition of Chiadini's Kitchen, video game recipes made real. Sorry there wasn't an episode last week, only it was E3 and things got a bit hectic so there wasn't time to cook or sleep or feed myself properly, but never mind, everything's back to normal now, except for the fact there's a bit of a heat wave going on in the UK right now, and given I am uniquely unsuited to hot weather, I thought I'd make one of our most requested recipes of late, sea salt ice cream from Kingdom Hearts. So sea salt ice cream is something that's appeared in the series since Kingdom Hearts 2. As the story goes, series director Tetsuya Nomura first tasted the ice cream at Disney Tokyo Sea and liked it so much, he decided to put it in the game. Personally, I'm just grateful to be cooking something that might help cool me off. So without any further ado, for this recipe, you will need two eggs, 470 milliliters of milk, 70 grams of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, or one vanilla pod if you've got one and you're feeling fancy, sea salt, that's sea salt, not table salt, because table salt is far more concentrated and so this could go quite easily wrong if you use too much of that, blue food coloring, green food colouring, and 230 millilitres of heavy whipping cream. Now, heavy whipping cream is a cream with a minimum fat content of 36%. It's something that's quite commonly available in the United States, but doesn't have a direct equivalent here in the UK. The closest, as far as I can work it out, is double cream, but double cream has a minimum fat content of 48%. So what I'm trying to say here is if you're in the UK, use double cream, but do be aware that the fat content will be 12% higher in your ice cream. Anyway, that's enough number crunching for now. Step one is to take our two eggs and separate them into two bowls. No. Yolk rupture. Bollocks. Eh, that sort of worked. Okay, so these are our separated eggs and we managed to avoid getting any yolk in the whites despite that horrible rupture. We're gonna put the whites to the side for now and just focus on the yolks because to that we're gonna add our sugar and mix until thick. Next, rather regrettably, we're gonna have to use the stove. I'm not looking forward to that bit at all. Anyway, we're going to pour our milk into a little pan. We're going to split the vanilla bean pod, or add the extract if that's what you're using, and just sit it over a medium heat, stirring occasionally until it's just about reaching boiling point. I know I said I was just going to split the vanilla bean pod, but what I'm actually going to do is get my knife in here and just very carefully... Oops or cat candidly rather, run it along the inside to try and get some of that bean paste out, just to make sure it gets into and stays in that milk to really impart as much flavor as possible. Right, so the milk's come off the stove now, and to be honest, it's smelling pretty good. Uh, the next step is to pour it into our egg yolks and sugar mix, and then stir all that together. Right, so I know this seems a bit backward given that we've just taken it out of the pan, but uh, we are now going to pour this mixture back into the milk pan once I've given it a very quick rinse, and then we're going to start heating that up to simmer it down and make a nice thick custard, which will form the basis for our ice cream. Two very important things to bear in mind while making this custard. Number one, do not stop stirring it, which is why I'm doing this piece to camera. 
down here. And number two, do not let it boil. Keep the heat nice and controlled and keep stirring it until it thickens up into a custard-like consistency. I say custard-like consistency, it will be a custard consistency because we're making custard. This heat is not doing good things to my brain. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, standing in front of a hot stove, stirring constantly for minutes on end was not what I had in mind when I thought about making ice cream. This is maybe one to make on a cold day to save for a very hot day, because right now I'm getting kind of a sweat on. And well, I could probably reduce it down a little bit further. I think I'm going to stop there, turn the heat off and call that custard. And with the custard successfully made, we're now going to turn our attention back to those egg whites you may remember from earlier. We're going to whisk them until stiff, because that won't make me warm either. Alright, so I'm just straight up sweating now, sorry about that, but never mind, uh, we have whisked our egg whites until stiff, so now we're going to stir in the custard um, and then put it in the fridge to cool down a bit, which seems like an odd step to me because isn't this just going to make scrambled egg? Um, but hey, uh, apparently it's what we're doing, so let's give it a go! <laughs> Alright, well there it is and it's not scrambled egg as far as I can tell, which is a good sign. So this is going in the fridge now to chill. Alright, so that's going to be cooling down for about an hour before we add the food colouring and the cream and turn it into ice cream in earnest. So I'm going to go and try and cool off and have some lunch. Right, so the mix has cooled down quite nicely in the fridge, so it's time to add the cream, the salt and of course the food colouring because you can't have Kingdom Hearts sea salt ice cream unless it's blue. That was a lot of cream. Here comes the salt, which we're gonna add sort of gradually so we don't overdo it. And we're gonna keep tasting it. Although obviously this recipe does have raw egg whites in it, so uh, whoops. That's the badger. And now the food colouring. In order to get the uh, turquoise that we need to make it look most like Kingdom Hearts, apparently you need to add 12 drops of blue and 3 drops of green. So I'm going to start with the green. Oh, that was not a drop, that was a dribble. Let's see how that does. Bloody nothing. Cap full of green. One, two, three. Uh, maybe I'm overdoing it now. Oh well, sorry. Four. There we go. That's more like it. Okay, so I'm not sure how well the colour's coming across on camera, but I promise you that is. Uh, pretty blue uh, base for sea salt ice cream from Kingdom Hearts and not some posh bath salts as it kind of also looks. Anyway, it's time to turn that into ice cream. So if you don't have an ice cream maker, what you can do is turn that out into a metal cake tin or two if you need to. Uh, put it in the freezer until all of the sides have firmed up and then mix it and just keep repeating that process until it has frozen all the way through and turned into ice cream. As for me, Bizarrely, I do have an ice cream maker, despite the fact that this kitchen lacks many other very basic tools. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to use that. Cool. 
course I never said it was a good ice cream maker, in fact it seems to be bucking like a mule right now, but anyway we're going to leave that running for about uh, 40 minutes I guess, and uh, see if it's turned into ice cream by the end. Okay, so it's actually a few hours later and it's so hot today that uh, the ice cream machine was actually defeated. Um, it, it simply couldn't stay cold enough to make ice cream, so I had to put this whole thing in the freezer and you'll see as I stir it now, it's still not completely set into ice cream. Um, it's just simply, it's, it's bloody warm today and it's not had enough time so naturally the sensible thing to do would be to return this to the freezer but the problem is I've got a production schedule to keep to uh, and in order to get this episode up today at all I'm just going to have to do a taste test with it as is in its current sort of slushy state and then I'll return that to the freezer and it should become proper ice cream after that so um, forgive me that it's not fully set into ice cream much less turned into icicle pops like it is in the game but it's gonna have to do. And as if to mock me, there's an ice cream van going past my house. Right then, so sea salt ice cream soup from Kingdom Hearts. Let's give this a go and see what it's like. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm. That's really good. Uh, when you first kind of taste it, you get a real salty hit, but then it's kind of mellowed out immediately by the sort of the creaminess and the sweetness um, of the vanilla, which is really, really delicious. That's great. Um, to be honest, I tried the custard just after I made it and it was overpoweringly, almost disgustingly sweet, and I was a bit worried about this one. Because I figured the salt would balance it out. Um, but I knew I was gonna add in like a whole bunch of cream as well, and I thought it was just gonna come out to be like really cloying, because I don't really have a sweet tooth. But that is really nice. The balance of sweet and salt is delicious. Um, yeah, that's definitely a treat to enjoy on a hot day. Not a treat to make on a hot day at all, but uh, I'm sure once that's actually set, it's going to be some really great ice cream. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me for this slightly slapdash, slightly heat addled edition of Kiadini's Kitchen. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please do consider liking and subscribing because that really does help us out a lot. And do keep those recipe suggestions coming in because they really are very, very helpful. Hopefully, as I say, you enjoyed this video. The heat really is getting to my brain. Um, if you did enjoy it, there are plenty more on screen now for you to watch. Uh, thank you again very much for watching and have a lovely day.